All right, we'll get started here in the lesson. Lesson number four, The Oppression of Slavery is the title of our lessons. Of, is the a title of our lesson. I want to uh, give you some types and see if you know what the anti-type is. Type, Israel. What, what is Israel the type of? The church. It's the type of the church. Slavery in Egypt. What's that the type of? Bondage of sin. Pharaoh. What's that the type of? King of sin, devil. The Satan, king of sin. Man, you are so smart. I, I am really proud of you. God's watchful care in Egypt. What was that? God's love while we were sinners. Okay. All right. Let's go back to uh, Pharaoh. Uh, Satan being a type, I mean, Pharaoh being a type of Satan. All right. During the oppression, we see that very much. You know, the, the Pharaoh that the ten plagues was against, oh yeah, he was, he was Satan. He was Satan. Yeah, you, you, can, you can see that very much. What about the one before him? Well, yeah, he was probably just bad. What about the one before him? What about the one that, uh, when Moses was born? What about the one before that? What about the one before that? What about the one that brought Joseph and his family down? That's a type of Satan also. Well, yeah, but he was a friendly one. Satan shows friendliness to us to entrap us into sin. So yeah, all the, all the pharaohs, you know, you think, well, yeah, but that was a good one. Well, it appeared good. And you know, Satan appears good to us when, when he's wanting to get us. He looks like that good pharaoh, so to speak. But you know, later on, he has no use whatsoever for you. All he wants is you to die in sin. That's all Satan ever wants to st wants to happen to us. You know, if it was if it was up to Satan to uh, be the one that allows you to live or not, however that that power is God's. But if it was up to Satan, as soon as you reach the count, uh, age of accountability. As soon as you reach the age of accountability, I think Satan would probably try and would kill you, you know, to get you, you know. And he's that kind of a devil. We talk about a hard taskmaster. That's, you know, in, in the dictionary, taskmaster, there ought to be a picture of the devil there, really, because that's, that's the worst of the worst right there. And so, you know, we let's let's keep these types and anti or uh, types and what were they types and uh, and anti types? Yeah, yeah. But let's keep them in mind. Those four. There's there's even more. But as we come to them, well, we'll we'll run into that and them. But let's keep those four in mind, in the back of our mind, at at, at how things work. Our uh, title, as I mentioned before, the oppression of slavery. Oppression. What was the word oppression mean? I looked up the uh, word oppression. I also looked up the, which is the root word oppress. And that meaning is rule harshly or overpower. And you know, that's what was being done to these children of Israel. You know, they were ruled very harshly. And you know, that happened 80 years before our lesson, uh, before the lesson that we're studying right now. That happened 80 years before, and even before that, because it had been going on for a long time. I don't know exactly how many years the children of Israel had been down in Egypt before it really got bad, got worse and got worse and waxed worse and worse until we're running into this, this part here. 
But you know, when, when people, and I'll, you know, we can take it as a collective group of people, like the, like, uh, the United States, the morality of the United States, but it all stems from each individual person. Yes, it does. You know, that the morality of us, when we let down the morality of our own selves, family, or whatever, that we wind up in shape just like this, in an oppressed state of living. And, and, and it happens, and it can happen so fast if we only... If we only tune the devil out and keep God tuned in, why, we will be a whole lot better off. Let's look at the memory verse there. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Okay, I'm going to just, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Let's look at the emphasis there. You have an adult emphasis. I'm going to read the junior emphasis. Pharaoh is making life unbearable for the Israelites. He refuses to let them leave Egypt with Moses and Aaron. This is the type of the bondage of sin. And it is. When you get hooked into slavery, into oppression like this, oh, well, I never will. I never will get into a position like this that because you know what's the need for brick building well that was just the type is what that is we are building bricks in our life are we building bricks for God or are we building bricks for the devil you know let's let's see what what we're what we're doing here so but this is this is when we work for God we are free. Oh yes, we have a master, but we're free. And you know, people, people that are in the bondage to Satan cannot understand that. It is so hard for them to understand. Well, if, if your master is Jesus and my master is Satan, which you can't get very many people to say that, but, but you know, if your master is Jesus and my master is Satan, you know, we're both under masters, but yes, Look at the difference between the masters. I mean, that is it. One thinks so much of you, the other one think nothing of you. One of you, one of them is for the well-being of you. The other one is well for the well-being of himself. And you know, it's just night and day difference. And so, so let's let's look at this and see what we can uh, uh, figure out on the, on these uh, readings here. I'm going to read uh, Exodus five. We're going to start. 5, 1, and 2. And afterwards Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold the feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I shall obey his voice to let Israel go? I, listen to this, I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Isn't that a sad statement right there? Pharaoh, king of Egypt, powerful, mighty. And he makes a statement like this, I know not the Lord. How sad, how sad. You know, there's, there's a lot of people in that condition. There's a lot of leaders, in world leaders today that could say the very same thing. I know not the Lord. And it's so sad, it's so sad. But here, Moses and Aaron, now remember last week, I believe it was, Moses saw the burning bush. Moses was told, I want you to go back to Egypt. God told him, said, I want you to go back to Egypt. Now, Pharaoh's not going to let him go right away. But he says, I want you to go back to Egypt and get my people out. I see their cries. Okay, Moses presents this to the uh, Pharaoh. And of course, Pharaoh's got cheap labor. And he's not going to let these people go. The economy of Egypt would be a disaster if that people go. And so what, what's going to happen? 
Moses was chosen by God to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. You know, we, we read that in the Bible. Remember the burning bush? Moses got a direct uh, a command from God from that burning bush. So he was the chosen one. God prepared him. Remember, he saved his, saved his life during the time when all baby boys was, was going to be killed, supposed to be killed. He was in, uh, 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 schooled in the best schools there in Egypt. Uh, God was preparing him. His mother wound up being his nurse, took care of him. His mother taught him the spiritual things of God. Uh, the uh, uh, education that he got was, was through Egypt, some of the best. And so everything was, was clicking as God was, was uh, directing. Everything was a clicking. The people there, they were slaves in Egypt. They would, they would be free in their home land of Canaan. That's what was, that was what was promised. Aaron was to help Moses. He was Moses' brother. The people of Israel believed him. But Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and they said, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go. Now was Pharaoh, okay, and then Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? I know not the Lord. How terrible. Was he being uh, negative that he did not want the people to go, that he really did not know God, who God really was? Or was he just had no care for God? I think it was some of both. Well, they were polytheistic in Egypt. And Pharaoh was looked upon as a god. Oh. And, you know, if you translate the word uh, Lord into the name Yahweh, it's the name of God. He was, he's saying, oh, I don't know Yahweh. You know, I'm a mm -hmm. god. Mm -hmm. have, you know, Ra, we have this one and that one. I don't know this Yahweh that you're uh, Okay, yeah, yeah. So he was really ignorant to the fact of who God really was. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I was thinking about, too, um, when he said, I, I don't know this God, uh -huh. who the Lord is. Well, who is this other God to come in and tell me what to do uh -huh. with my uh, dominion? Uh -huh. like, I don't even know who he is. Yep. Right. Pharaoh was in a terrible situation here. I mean, he, he spiritually, he had no spirituality about him at all. You know, I mean, he was, he was considered to be the highest of all right there. And so, so, uh, so Pharaoh, Pharaoh was, uh, well, look at, look at Satan. What does he see? What, how does he see it? About the same way, doesn't he? Yeah. Let's go to Exodus 5 and 6. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmakers, taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick as heretofore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tail of the bricks which they would make heretofore ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish aught thereof. For they be idle, therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Well, if they got time to go sacrifice to their God, they must have idle time on their hands. When you could see full well that they were working at full speed, you know, they were, they, he was getting the everything out of the people that he could 
get out of them. And he used that as an excuse to try and get more out of them. You know, the, the people, um, do you think they might have had a weekend? Do you, you know, we, we get two days for a weekend and we complain, you know, that, that uh, boy, I could sure use a three-day weekend this weekend or something to that effect, you know. Do you think the children, or children of Israel got weekends off? I doubt it. I doubt it. They might have even had to work the Sabbath day, you know. And, of course, the Sabbath day wasn't established, but, you know, that they might have had to work, you know. And, you know, work, 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 you know, all the time. And, you know, why do you think this came along? That it was nothing but slavery and oppression and work and work and work. Why was that? Okay, let's, let's look at, let's look at that, that question right there. Do you think, now we, we know the rest of the story, but do you think that God allowed this to happen to them to show them how bad everything could be? You know. And you know, when they were finally delivered out of Egypt, you know, don't you think that they should have been just so happy and so thankful that God delivered them out of, out of Egypt and out of all this oppression and everything. But you know, you get to thinking about, they start murmuring, you know, right away. You know, remember back when you were in Egypt. Remember back when you were in Egypt. Is that where you would rather be, you know? You know, we sometimes murmur in our Christian life. I do. I won't, I won't accuse you all, but I sometimes think, you know, well, things ain't going, things are not going the way that I think they should. And sometimes I kind of have to slap myself and say, look where I could have been. Sure. If it hadn't have been for Jesus Christ, where could I have been? Under this same bondage, not making bricks, but, you know, under the bondage of sin. And, you know, it's a, it's a awakening uh, uh, effect when you realize that, you know, I've got it really good. I'm thankful. You know, God takes care of us. God heals us. Yes, I've got a cold and I sound kind of raspy this morning, but God's going to take care of me. You know, God's going to take care of me. I know he is. I got up this morning, I said, I can't hardly talk, honey. I says, but, you know, I'm going to try my best. And, you know, things kind of cleared up. And, yes, I, I don't sound like I normally do, but God's going to take care of me. It's because we trust in God there. If the people has time to think about worship, then we are not working them hard enough, is what Pharaoh was saying. Well... You know, that's kind of what Satan says. If the people has time to come and worship on Sunday, you know, come worship Jesus, we must not be giving him enough trials and temptations and stuff. And, you know, yes, when we come to worship God, Monday morning comes, or maybe even before Monday morning gets here, we might have a trial or a temptation. It's the devil trying to get at us. But you know, we serve a greater person than the devil. Well, we, we serve Almighty God and we are proud of it. This Satan tries every way to get our mind off of Jesus, to get our mind off of spiritual things. You know, it's just like Pharaoh. He used work to get their mind off of, off of God and off of trying to escape and trying to get out. And okay, you're, you're wanting to go three days and worship God, your God. So he says, okay, I'll just pile more work on you. Okay, what does Satan do to us? 
You know, oh, you want you think you want to go to church and 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 serve God? Well, he puts in our mind wanting to play or wanting to distract or wanting to to do something other than come and worship God. You know, there's so many people that spend time on the internet, you know. Sure. There's so many people spend time on their phone. You just you just watch. You just watch out there in the world. You, you don't have to watch very long. Somebody's on their phone, you know, doing this, texting or whatever they're doing and, and, and one thing and another. But, you know, no, it's not bad as long as you keep it under control. Now, uh, how much is under control? That's between you and God. I'm not going to say. But, you know, yes, it's nice to have modern technology there, but don't. And I say, don't let it get in the way of God. Right. And that, you know, that's, that, that is so, so discouraging sometimes when you're talking to somebody and, and they're on the phone. Or they may be talking on their phone. And I've even answered some people, you know. You know, and I'm on the phone. Oh, it's hard for me to even answer people anymore now. You know, if they're talking, even if they're talking to me, I just sometimes just go on because I figure they're probably on the phone, you know. But, you know, that's the devil's workshop. You know, keep them busy with something. Oh, yeah. Just keep them busy with something. Keep their mind cluttered up so that they can't worship yeah. God. And, you know, that's, that, that, is, that is so, so distracting. Let's go on down to verse 9 there, and then I'm going to kind of uh, uh, put them two, to get two readings together there. Let, them, let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. And the taskmasters of the people went out, and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus saith Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go ye. Get you straw where you can find it. Yet not aught of your work shall be diminished. In other words, we want the same amount of bricks made. That's what that, that it's, it's hard to read, or it's hard for me to read, but that's what it means. Don't let them diminish. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. Why? What, why did they need the straw to make the bricks? Well, that's the way the straw, that's the way the bricks are, are, are made is with straw. The reason for it is to keep the bricks so that they wouldn't crack. And, and it was also to hold the brick together. Or that's what I was, that's what I have been told before. And so... If they would have just made it out of the mud, probably out of the Nile River, why the quality, the quality would not have been there. And I think that's one of the things that when he said, where was it that he said? He said that the diminished, diminished, that it not be diminished. He meant quantity quality and the amount or the size too see I think he meant all three of that sure. quantity quality and the size and there may be some more restrictions on that too but they had to be made just like they were made before where did these bricks go to I don't know building of something and they wanted this to stay a while you know, when, when you build a house, you don't just build a house for two years and think, well, I'm going to just kind of put this up and if it lasts two years, well, I'll build another one, you know. No, you want a house to last, hopefully a lifetime, sure. you know, hopefully a lifetime. Sometimes they don't, but, you know, hopefully long enough that, that you can at least get it paid for anyway. But, you know. You, you want it to last when you build something. Well, that's the same way Pharaoh was, wanted it to last. And so, you know, here, here he was. 
you know, and Pharaoh says, okay, the time that they would use for worshiping God can be used to gather their own straw then. You know, he put a big restriction. You know, I'm sure they probably had straw gatherers out there that gathered the straw, brought it in. Uh, the brick makers was there mixing the mud and the straw together, and maybe you had somebody else that formed the brick, you know, was in forms and, and you know, kind of a, you know, mass production that way. And now the ones that was mixing the straw had to go find the straw, or mixing the brick and mortar and everything, now had to go find the straw. More, more things put, put upon them. Don't you think that caused problems? Don't you think that probably caused problems? Probably among themselves. You know, as they was going out looking for, for uh, straw, maybe two people found a field there that had straw in it or a spot there that had straw. Do you think they might have started bickering among themselves who was there first? You know, you know, anything to cause problems. And you know, that's, that's what Satan does. Anything to cause problems. He don't care how much bickering. He would love for us as a congregation to get in a bickering mess, you know. That would just thrill him to death, you know. That's the reason why we got to have unity, you know. That's a whole nother ball of wax there, but you know, we got to have unity. We, you know, prefer, you know, God's law is prefer one another, you know. Prefer your brother or prefer your sister. And so, you know, Pharaoh orders harder work. Right away, Pharaoh made it worse for the Israelites. That's as soon as, as, soon as Aaron and, and Moses got to uh, Egypt confronted Pharaoh, you know, and Moses has, I don't think Moses has a clue at all the things that's going to happen before the children of Israel is turned loose. Remember, there was 10, ten plagues yet to come. Moses didn't know that. He didn't know whether, he didn't even know there was probably going to be any plagues. He, and then after the first one, he thought, well, surely that'll let, let him go. But, you know, that's a lot of things. A lot of things was to happen. Pa Pharaoh thought more work would drive from the Israelites all thoughts of going to worship God. He failed to consider that God was in this. And so right away, he, he, he made it worse for the Israelites. He told his, task told his taskmasters to make their work harder. They were building cities of brick for him. Uh, maybe that's what they were doing, building cities or towers or maybe the pyramids. I don't know what all they were doing, but, but they were building bricks and they were going for somewhere. They had to chop up their straw, mix it in with the clay, form the brick, form the clay with, into bricks. And now the straw was held so that the straw would hold the, the clay together and now they had to go find their own straw. Now Pharaoh said not to give them straw. They must go out and find the short stubble in the fields where the crop had been cut off. However, they must make just as many brick as before. And again, as I said, that would be quantity, but the quality still had to be there. They, you know, I think was a was a restriction. It don't necessarily say that in the Bible, but you know, your taskmaster, no matter who you work for, wants the best out of you. You know, and you know, God says that you're supposed to give your best too. And so, you know, this was, this was no different here. He wanted them not to have time to think of going away. Just think about that. That's, that's, that's what Pharaoh wanted. And just think how, how Satan does the same thing. He would, he would be tickled to death if we wouldn't showed up for work, showed up for church this morning. Satan would be tickled to death. Satan's glad that, that Sister Trish can't come to work, come to, I say work, come to church. 
He's tickled to death that she can't come to church. But you know, God's stronger than Satan is. And I, look, I, I really expect her to be here this evening. The people scattered all over Egypt searching for stubble. Satan likes to scatter people through however means he can do it, whether it's contention, whether it's weariness, or whether it's, it's bickering and fighting, which is contention, or whether it's just exploring new things. You know, you know, uh, a lot of times why people will say, well, I don't go to church. I like to go out into nature, you know, and, and more, you know, uh, hike around on, on the wildlife refuge or something like that. You know, I'm, I feel close to God. Well, okay, yeah, you probably, you may do, you know, but couldn't you do that on Saturday, you know, and come to church on Sunday, and you can feel close to God here at church. And, you know, that's, that's what God wants. God says, forsake not the assembling together. And so, you know, that's, that's very important. It's very important to God, but it's very important to you, to me. You know, because we can gain things by that. Oh, yes, going out uh, and hiking in the wildlife. I love doing that. I love doing that, but not on Sunday morning. <laughs> and the task, let's go look at verse 13. And the taskmasters haste him, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily task, as when there was straw. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters has set over them, were beaten and demanded, Wherefore have ye not fulfilled your task in making brick, both yesterday and today as heretofore? You know, this, this was very unfair. This was very unfair. But you know, Satan is not a fair person. Yeah. Satan is very unfair. Satan does not care how unfair he can be towards us. However he uh, decides he wants to try and get us, that's what he's going to do. Hurried and beaten, the taskmasters haste, hurry them. Come on, come on. You got to pick up the pace. You got to pick up the pace. Don't you... Don't you hate to have a uh, uh, boss that says that to you? You got to pick up the pace. I'm working as fast as I can. Now, if I'm lollygagging around, that's different, you know. But when you're working as hard as you can, okay, I'm doing, I'm doing what I can do, you know. That's the best I can do. I'm doing. But, you know, God never does that. Amen. When we're doing the best we can do, with his help, that's what he expects. You know, oh, I want more out of you. I want more out of you. You know, that's a, that's a hard taskmaster. When that God does want the full 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 amount from you, he don't want you dragging your feet. Because if you drag your feet, more than likely, you're dragging somebody else with you. More than likely. So, so we don't want to drag our feet, but we want to do our fair share. It's just like two horses in a, in, a, in a harness, you know. You let one do all the work and the other one do nothing, then why have that, per, have that horse in there? Sure. Get something that'll, 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 that'll work. And that's the same way we are. Let's pull our load. Let's pull our load. Finish your work. Do it all. They set some of the Israelites as officers over the others. If the full number of bricks was not made, the officers were whipped and beaten. It was even worse than before Moses even returned. It got worse. It got worse. Why? Because the straw was taken away, remember? The straw was taken away. They had to go find it. The officers complained to Pharaoh. He did, it did no good. And you know... We in, when we were in sin, we could complain to the devil. It did no good. Right. It didn't do a bit of good. We had to come to someone where it did do some good. 
and the Lord gets a hold of us. He said, ye are idle. That is why you want to go and wor uh, sacrifice to the Lord. Go to work. The officers met Moses and Aaron. They complained to them. What'd they say? You are to blame for this. They said, they're blaming Moses and Aaron. You know, and that's another thing the devil wants to do is blame others. You know, he wants us to blame other people or to believe and blame God for things if it don't go the way we want it to. We have to be careful in that. All right, let's look at verse 22 there. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil intrigued this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he has done evil to this people. Neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. God told Moses, I'm going to deliver the people. But he says, Pharaoh's not going to let him go right away. Here's the first test here. Moses being blamed. Moses brings it before God. But you know, he's almost blaming God for what is happening here. But you know, let's watch ourselves in this. Because God has a purpose. We look ahead and we can see. Okay, Moses, if you just, you know, if you would have just been compliant to God, and when has God told you? Yes, it took a while, but if you just be compliant, okay, let's point it back to us. If we will only be compliant when it comes to the hardships that we think we're going through, let's do the same thing that we're trying to tell Moses to do. Let's be compliant to God. You know, we can, we can learn a big lesson here. We can learn a big lesson here. And so, God um, uh, wanted Moses to learn this lesson here too. Moses, Moses was helpless in himself, and he asked God's God why you know Moses felt badly you know he felt badly for the children of Israel here you know I've kind of stirred up a hornet's nest you know and and but you know God wanted me to come here and I have to do what God has for for me to do and and God was God had everything under control but he just could not see it at this time. He had thought God was going to free the Israelites, and he hadn't done that yet. He prayed. He asked why the Lord had treated them so. Why had he sent Moses? He, it was getting worse than before. He had spoke to Pharaoh. The Lord had not delivered his people as he had promised. No, no. Not yet. Not yet. But you know, he, God promised that he was going to deliver them. That was probably in the back of Moses' mind, but it might have been shoved clear back there to where he wasn't bringing that up too much, you know. You know, if God makes us a promise, yes, we can, we can have it back in the back of our mind, in the back of our head. But, you know... That's a promise. If it's a promise that God gives, it's a promise that we can stand on. Amen. Standing on His promises. Remember that song? Standing on His promises. We will, will not fail. May take some time. He didn't say He was going to uh, fulfill the promise like that. It may take some time. Moses was making the same mistake we make sometimes. You know, that's true. I, I, I am guilty of, of mistakes like that. 
But you know, God shakes me sometimes and wakes me up and says, Hey, I'm still, I'm still here. I'm still here. I, ain't, I haven't went anywhere. I'm still here. He had not waited long enough. Sometimes things get worse because God is working. In the end, all will come right if we leave it to Him and not try and go some other avenue and not try and uh, help God in getting something uh, accomplished. But, you know, just do our part as God leads us to do. We are told to rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. You know, that's, that's sometimes a, a job for me. That's uh, found in uh, Psalms 37, 5 and 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. And that, 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 that's, that's, a, that's a very good uh, uh, scripture there that, uh, that comes to my mind a lot of times because I get kind of impatient sometimes. The Lord told Moses he would surely bring the people out. Moses told the people, but they did not listen because of their troubles for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. And like I said, this was probably being allowed of God for later on when God could tell them, remember when you were back in Egypt and remember the bondage that you suffered and remember the hard times that you had back there in Egypt. Therefore, serve me. That's what God told the children of Israel. As long as you serve me, don't go after all these other gods, but serve me. He says, I will be your God. You will be my people. But then you go after other gods, you're going to be in worse bondage than what you were back in Egypt. And you know, sometimes, like I said, sometimes it, it's got to get worse before it gets better. Because God's working. God's teaching us. God's helping us to uh, uh, get the patience that we need. God's helping us to be um, humble. God's helping us maybe in, in ways that we don't even know how He's helping us. But you know, if we'll only let God lead and we follow like, uh, like He wants us to, why uh, uh, God, will, uh, God, will, God will be merciful upon us. Let's look at the memory verse now. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? These people, every one of them could say, O wretched man, O wretched woman that I am, making these bricks day in, day out, hour in, hour out, minute in, minute out. Who's going to free me from this? You know, that's the way we are when we were in sin. When we were in sin, you know, oh wretched man that I am, this is what he's talking about. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? How can we get free from sin? Israel needed to be free from slavery. Now remember, the slavery and sin, the bondages of, of Egypt is a type of sin before we uh, uh, Turn our heart and life over to Jesus. Well, it's, it's sin. It's the sin. It's the bondage of sin is what it is. You know, we can be released from the bondage of sin or we can still be in the bondage of sin. You know, we're one of the, one of the two. We, we're, we're not in the process, you know, because that process happens like that. You know, we're not in the process. We're either in or we're out, one or the other. We need to be free from sin. Sin, listen to this, sin is a body of death. It is as if a dead body was tied to us. It is, it is worse than Israel's slavery. Can you imagine having a body tied to you? Well, that's what sin is. A 
dead body tied. It's like a dead body tied to you. It's worse than Israel's sin, Israel's uh, slavery. The verse says, who shall deliver me? The next verse has the answer. We can be set free in Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus is the only one who can free us from sin. That next verse after the memory verse reads like this. It's Romans 7, 24. The verse that I'm going to read now is 7, 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind of myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Serving the law of God. You know, and God makes a promise to us when He delivers us from sin. He makes a promise to us just like He makes the a promise to the children of Israel. If you will be my woman, or if you will be my man, I will be your God. Now he's to you, he said, if you'll be my people, because he's talking to the collective group. But you know, Jesus comes to us personally, and he says, if you will be my woman, if you're a woman, if you'll be my man, if you will be my girl, or if you'll be my boy, I will be your God. And that's the same way that he, that he said to the children of Israel that if we will put him first and if we will follow him to the fullest extent that we will be released from sin forever. Amen. And I, I thank the Lord for that. If you haven't experienced that, if you haven't experienced that, I encourage you that before another minute passes, now's the time to do that.